Sporty and fabulous might be the theme of this year's Frameline Festival, the oldest and largest and, well, most fabulous LGBT cultural event in the world. Our conversation now with its executive director, Francis Wallace. Welcome. Well, thank you. Thanks, 40 David. years 40 of queer years. film. I know. It's unbelievable, right? Since 1977. So unbelievable. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's quite a milestone. I was thinking the mm. other day looking at an article that they said Will and Grace was going to have its 10-year anniversary mm. on TV. Mm. You know, there would have been no Will and Grace. There would have been no gay arts movement without mm. Frameline. Frameline was the first. Yeah. The absolute first, a uh, sheet went up on a little community centre in Page Street and uh, it was kind of the gay festival of Super 8 films. Right. Yeah, where there was no public screenings of gay media. So, yeah, it was really like a revolutionary act. It, right, and, and now with this revolutionary yeah. act, it has corporate sponsors. Yeah. And the, you got a red carpet, don't yeah. you? Yeah, um, we had the odd red carpet. <laughs> Pink, red, yes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, talk to me a little bit about this year's festival. Mm. I mean, 40 is quite a significant milestone, mm. and the festival has really pushed the envelope mm. about what mm. LGBT film is mm. like. What's our opening night film? I understand something mm. called Kiki. Exactly, Kiki. An exceptional documentary. We really wanted to put a stake in the ground in terms of representation. Mm -hmm. It's really um, Paris is burning, but kind of over two decades later. So it shows the ballroom scene of LGBTQ like teens of color in New York City, you know, and in some ways we've progressed a long way for certain groups of people, but yeah. this show, this film really shows how we haven't progressed for cer certain groups of people as well. Uh -huh. So it's really, it's beautiful in terms of the ballroom scenes and the flamboyancy, mm -hmm. but also still the struggles too. And that's re really, where Frameline 40 wants to position itself in mm -hmm. terms of who's not represented in mainstream media in 2016. Right, so Frameline's mm. not afraid of being political. Oh no, we're not afraid of being political or bold or making sure that all voices are heard. Right, mm. now um, I noticed looking through the, the list of films coming up, and I I'm so glad actually this year I'm going to be in town. I can actually oh, finally <laughs> see it for the first time Excellent. in, in yeah. a few years. Mm. There's a film about the furry community, fursonas. <laughs> it is a picture of there a raccoon is, and actually, a wolf and a yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I remember the first time I saw them in the gay pride parade, I don't know, I thought it was a, a candy ad or something. <laughs> what is Personas about? Personas is an extraordinary documentary. It's kind of like a deep dive into the furry community, of course, mm -hmm. people who dress in anthropomorphic bodysuits for role play, uh, basically. But, uh, you know, there's some contentious issues even within the furry community. And we just like to showcase that Frameline has something for everyone, too. There's right. also a short titled Furries, too. So, if if, uh, you know, you're into exploration, please, please do check out our Right, so our if you team. want to role play as a raccoon, this is your, <laughs> this is, this is yeah, your yeah, movie yeah, for you. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Right. Now, yeah. of course, I mean, not being silly, I mean, they mm. go, it, the mm. Frameline Festival runs the gamut from tragedy to comedy mm. to serious mm. documentary. Mm. There's a film that's also, I have read, is getting a good deal mm. of attention, mm. Southwest of Salem. Yeah, Talk to me about that. Southwest of Salem, yeah, and um, true. What we've seen, too, in the U.S. documentary front is a lot of documentaries coming out about social social justice issues. Southwest of Salem, um, the story of the San Antonio Four was for lesbian Latinas in Texas who were um, wrongly convicted uh, on a um, sexual abuse case in the 90s uh, and were uh, imprisoned uh, and uh, there's kind of been of course the you know the media had its heyday with the case it was kind of satanic mm -hmm. ritual became right. kind of the headlines etc and um, we're very proud to say that the four women will actually be attending the festival but these are the really important documentaries too being made in the United States still about you know voices you're not hearing from underrepresented communities mm -hmm. too it's a very powerful documentary one of the other things that I noticed having you know spent much of my youth in the 80s in a, in a dance club watching Madonna mm, mm. and all those what I oh. thought were very sexy dancers <laughs> from, yes, from Vogue. I, I remember when her original documentary came out about that, mm. that it was quite a big mm. deal, but mm. now we're, what, 10 years on from that? And there's a documentary mm. about yeah. the documentary. Yeah, yeah. Was it called Vogue? Uh, Strike a Pose. Strike a Pose. Strike a Pose. So this is an extraordinary film, similar to people who uh, enjoy 20 Feet from Stardom. Mm -hmm. It's the seven dancers from the 1990 Blonde Ambition tour of Madonna, which was really this global, global cultural phenomenon. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and uh, also they starred in True and False, the film. And uh, that's the one I was talking yeah, about. Yes, yeah, yes. exactly. But it's like it's almost like follows them subsequently to see, like, of course, how their lives were affected by this immediate rise to stardom. Mm -hmm. But then what happens subsequently? And there's some challenging stories. There's some uplifting okay. stories. But it's uh, yeah, it's an exceptional film too. So what? I mean, this is a hard question to mm. ask a director. Do you have mm. a favorite? Ooh, ooh. Um, actually, I'm going to go with Girls Lost, uh, mm -hmm. which is a narrative feature out of Sweden. Uh, it's kind of a gender expansive tale of this small group of girls that are um, they actually find this crazy plant, which uh, which they kind of uh, eat, and they're able to shift genders and become uh, boys for a limited period of time. So they, it's kind of a gender fluidity. So it's kind of like space. hair meets uh, <laughs> Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, yeah. and it's a bit <laughs> Twilight kind of esque. It was like a teenage pop, uh, popular fiction novel in Sweden. So Girls Lost is not to be missed right. either. You know, I remember, I've been here now in San Francisco for 30 years, so I remember the 10th uh, oh, frame line look at you, festival. David. <laughs> and at that point, everything was about, it was all about AIDS. Mm, yeah. I mean, pretty mm, much. The, yeah. As, as it should have been. Mm, you know, we've mm, seen the festival deal mm, with issues and mm. reflect our community. But I wouldn't say there was a large non gay audience mm, for Frameline mm. then. Has Frameline become about more than just gay film? Has it really become a quote unquote legit film festival now? Oh, yeah. I think it's always legitimate, of course. Oh, what, I, what, oh, I, yeah. what I mean by legit yeah. is is something where they don't go, oh, that's one of the gay festivals. Right. I mean, we're no. going to go to Sundance, yeah. we're going to mm. go to this, and mm. we're going to go to Frameline mm. because the quality of the film mm. is such. Yeah. No, absolutely. Like, and we do, as you mentioned, like Sundance, Toronto, and mm -hmm. I attend those festivals, and people, the way that... Um, we're received or Frameline is received both across the nation and around the globe is um, completely legitimate and uh, yeah like some of the top end film I, I would say is coming out of mm -hmm. LGBTQ filmmakers and and screenwriters and documentarians because you also see the focus in more mainstream film festivals with that LGBTQ content and it's just like we're not only the 10% but we also have the 10% the top 10% of quality I would say right. as well. You mm. know we've only got about 30 seconds left but that yeah. raises an interesting question there are probably now actually LGBT films that are in other film festivals that don't mm. necessarily make it to Frameline I mean Frameline you want some stuff that's really Oh, yeah. Unique. We had uh, 900 submissions actually this year and attended five or six of the big major festivals. So it is like a six, eight month process. And we added the Q. I just want to say it's LGBTQ now. We added My that apologies. last year. No worries yeah. at all, just to include everyone. Now, I just want to make sure before we sign off that I am correct. It is still the largest LGBTQ <laughs> cultural event Very in the good. world, correct? <laughs> it is, yes. And the longest running. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Francis. Thank we you look so forward much. to everything this Lovely. year. Yeah. Hope to see you on the red carpet, the purple carpet, maybe at Frameline <laughs> this year. Thanks for watching our very purple show, 10%. I'm David Perry. Good night.